this month, next week, it's quite an exciting time for the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development because finally we get to commission the Karuma Hydropower Project. We shall also commission the Karuma Interconnection Project. So this is the dam and uh, the transmission line that evacuates power off the station to different places. So there are four substations in different places to basically contribute towards stabilizing the energy infrastructure. So it's a 600 megawatt power plant. It is the largest in Uganda. It's one of the biggest in Africa. Uh, doctor, the 600 uh, megawatts power station, uh, how does it align with Uganda's energy transition goals and uh, renewable energy uh, targets? It does. First of all, hydro is a renewable energy source, so it is clean. It also increases uh, how much energy we have. Now we move to over 2,000. Uh, but the bigger goal of government is to move towards 52,000 megawatts. But the drive is really to not just uh, have energy or electricity for basic use like household, but also to encourage industrialization. So even when you look at the current National Development Plan 3 yes. and preparation for NDP4, we are moving in that direction to increase load. Load, we mean people who can use the energy because production is there, but sometimes we are unable to consume it because how much can we use? So if we could just give a simple example, well, not simple, but if we could give an area like Karamoja, just the discovery of minerals and the number of industries, cement, uh, marble that are coming up, the amount of electricity they need. So what we are providing now with Karuma Switched On, you might find in the next two, three years is not even sufficient. With all these uh, industrial parks that we, we are now promoting, each of them needs power and water as basics. You know, so do we have enough? So if all this come up in the next two, three years, you'll find the 2,000 is not enough. So we must have a plan, and we do have a plan to expand not only generation, but also other sources of energy. The Karuma project also had the interconnection. That is part of the improvement of the infrastructure plan. You've actually touched on my, my other question, and it's about, of course, Uganda's vision. We've been talking about uh, industrialization. Like every year, the last couple of years, the budget has always factored in the issue of industrialization. So uh, Karuma coming onto grid, uh, what is the expected impact in terms of uh, industrialization goals as well as the economic transformation? First of all, we expect more stability, reliability of power. So of course when you have sufficient power, issues of shedding of load should not really arise. If it happens, it happens once in a while, but not because you have insufficient capacity. It could be maybe because of the poor network or the old network. We know that our network is generally old, so there's that general move to refurbish it. So maybe that should be the only reason that maybe for so many hours, today, three hours, we shall be building this section, but not that we can't generate or there's ins insufficient power. So that should be a thing of the past. But in terms of industrialization, every industrialist, every factory, every industry wants stable power. There are people who have shown interest in investing in the country. Your parting shot as we come to the tail end of this interview? Your parting shot is that uh, as a government of Uganda, of course, we are happy, we are excited, we congratulate the visionary direction of the president who ensured that we get funds for this who had the conviction that Ugandans can do this, as you know that uh, this project was part funded by government of Uganda, but also the belief in the capacity of uh, the technical team for Ugandans to supervise this. We had a team from Ministry of Energy, a team from Generation, a team from Transmission overseeing this. It's a step in the right direction. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. Yes. Great.